Fluid Love, What One Star is Doing to Make Dating Easier for the Queer Community. Plus, he's the new face of Louis Vuitton. The fashion house announces Virgil Abloh's successor. And Fighting for Representation, one of Hollywood's top directors, talks about the state of visibility in Hollywood. Welcome to Advocate Today. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Seven-time Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton says he will not be silenced by a new rule banning drivers from speaking out on political issues. Hamilton is an outspoken advocate on many groups, including LGBTQ plus rights, Black representation, and climate change. A new rule from Formula One's governing body says it will require written permission for drivers to make any kind of statements that promote political, religious, or personal matters. Formula has a long history of drivers speaking out about various issues. The new season starts on March 5th in Bahrain. Actor Rebel Wilson is entering the dating game, but not for herself. She's launching a new dating app called Fluid. Wilson tells People Magazine the app is different because it gives users the option to define their sexuality, but not say what gender they're looking for. She calls it love with no labels. Wilson says she wishes an app like this existed before she met her current partner, Ramona Agruma, because it would have helped her make connections based on qualities outside of gender. Wilson says she doesn't know how to define her own sexuality, but she never thought she was 100% straight. The Fluid app will be available soon. He's known for his music and iconic hats and outfits, and now now Pharrell Williams is cementing himself in the fashion world. The musician, record producer, and designer will succeed the late Virgil Abloh as Louis Vuitton's men's creative director. The French luxury fashion house says Pharrell's first collection will debut in June during Men's Fashion Week in Paris. Abloh died in November 2021 at 41 years old following a private battle with cancer. Award season is rapidly approaching its end with only a few more award shows to go. This year, there were plenty of projects with LGBTQ plus and BIPOC representation, but that didn't show up in the nominations and awards. I spoke with acclaimed trans director Silas Howard about directing on the Apple TV Plus series Dickinson, fighting for equity in Hollywood, and more. You executive produced and directed some of one of my favorite series of the past few years, which is Dickinson. That show, my God. Um, would you talk a bit about working on that show, which you know uh, updated Emily Dickinson's story and handed back a narrative to her that she wasn't allowed in her lifetime, which was a, a queer story. And of course, stars Haley Steinfeld. Yeah. Yeah, this was a wrap gift from Haley. This is uh, the Dickinson family in a needlepoint. <laughs> uh, needlepoint. <gasps> But uh, it, for, for uh, anybody that uh, is unfamiliar, it's a reimagining of uh, Emily Dickinson as a rebellious, very self-possessed goth teenager. And uh, Elena Smith created it, and it's just brilliant. And it's a half-hour period comedy that deals with misogyny, racism, classism. And, uh, you know, our third season was set in the Civil War. I mean, it does... It just takes bold risks and looks at the past as present, looks at how much we're still battling these things uh, today. And, uh, but does it with, I always feel like you have to laugh with the, with the difficult and painful things in life in order to, just a way to connect. But yeah, it's so brilliant. And Haley's phenomenal in it. And the, yeah, I fell in love. I really did, got to, you know, deep dive into Emily's poems because they, they weave them in so beautifully with the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's so beautifully done. And just uh, anecdotally, I had started watching it and I was telling my colleague, Daniel, who is the editor in chief of Out, uh, he's a poet. And I said, oh, Daniel, you've got to watch this. And I was explaining it to him and I said, and Jane Krakowski plays Mrs. Dickinson. And he says, that's so gay. <laughs> oh. yeah, it really is. And the, and the love story, I mean, it was phenomenal to work with Jane and in this kind of context and her, yeah. just her pure commitment to character. But I love this Sue, Emily, you know, queer storyline. And the show is out there and they have like, you know, Billy Eichner playing Walt Whitman. And we, re, we rebuilt this space that was a queer bar in New York in the 1800s where the bartenders would wear, would wear aprons with nothing else on. So it was like, their version of Chaps <laughs> and, uh, you know, Folsom Street Fair Day. But, uh, but really all of this stuff was based in a, a lot of, tr you know, factual information and people that, you know, you read these letters that she wrote to Sue and it's not, 
not hard to imagine what was going on. So Silas, it's award season and there are plenty of films uh, nominated for Oscars and Critics' Choice, etc., that have queer characters that are queer narratives, but uh, they're not being created by queer people. And as far as I can tell, there are not many queer people nominated this season for anything. Um, I did find out Stephanie Shu from Everything Everywhere All at Once is queer, which is great, but I didn't know that going in. Uh, and I wonder, would you talk a bit about what needs to happen for queer people to be recognized for their work, whether they're writing about straight people or not, you know, whatever the, whatever they're creating. I would say one word, equity. <laughs> we yeah. need to allow, you know, I, I'm not dogmatic about, I'm not a good rule follower. I'm just not by nature. But what we need to do is, is build equity to allow people who, whose stories it is uh, to be in the mix telling them. And also it's just such a better, you can't be messy and irreverent and and I want as much as I want queer characters, I want them to be messed up. I want them to be flawed and make mistakes and just be iconic movie characters. Um, and I and I think you really can't be that messy unless you know the world. You know those the, it's too uh, difficult. So yeah, I think uh, I think just on a pure capitalism basis, it's a better story. And I just really hope that it it pushes. You know, it keeps getting pushed that direction. I had the uh, but my my third film, Claire Danes and Octavia Spencer and Dowd, but it um and just a great cast. But Jim was playing straight, uh, married uh, his character married to Claire, and Octavia Spencer played lesbian. My friend Anish is trans, uh, South Asian who was playing a primal screen therapist, and it was fun to like, yeah, you know, like mix up and push that format as well. But you realize there's a lot that goes into casting, and there's a lot that goes into you know that. I, I think we're we still have a ways to go, but we're going in the right direction. Good. Oh, well, thank you for that. And then Silas, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to say what you've got coming up next. Oh, you know what? I'm Since I just finished Darby and the Dead, I'm just going to say, <laughs> watch, please watch that. I, uh, cool. I have some other projects, but, uh, you know, we, we filmed this, you know, within a year and all through production to post. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, on Hulu and definitely check it out. And otherwise I'm working on, yeah, I'm working on some shows, but none of them on the stage to say anything about yet. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Silas Howard, for chatting with me. It's been my pleasure. Whew, thank you. I feel rusty. I haven't done an interview for a while. <laughs> no, you were great. You, you were, were great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much to Silas for speaking with me. Our full interview is available now on the Advocate Channel YouTube page, and Silas's most recent film, Darby and the Dead, is now streaming on Hulu. A reporter arrested at an Ohio train derailment press conference is no longer facing charges. News Nation reporter Evan Lambert was reporting live when he was told to stop speaking during the remarks and was asked to leave. Lambert was taken to the ground and arrested as soon as he got off the air. Lambert was charged with resisting arrest, a second degree misdemeanor, and criminal trespass. State's Attorney General says there isn't enough evidence for an arrest. The AG called on officials to show a higher level of restraint when arresting reporters. We're celebrating Black History Month. Today, we honor attorney, entrepreneur, and trans rights activist, Kyler W. Broadus. Kyler W. Broadus is a Black trans man and has been a longtime advocate for the LGBTQ community. He is the first out transgender American to testify before the U.S. Senate. He spoke during a hearing for the Employment Non-Discrimination Act in 2012. He serves with many LGBTQ organizations to promote equality and fight against discrimination. The Advocate Magazine recognized brought us in our 25 Legal Advocates Fighting for Trans Rights list. Thank you for joining me on this Advocate today. You can open the Advocate channel wherever you stream for more Black History Month spotlights. You can also find content and coverage that advocates for you online at advocatechannel.com. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.